the baby has a simple deficiency. Hook the baby up to someone else's blood and see if she gets better. Two-year-old swallowed a coin 20 hours ago. Well, I'd go in with a scope and get it. I think we can say this isn't working. This means there's an infection. A radiation dosimeter badge turned positive. I was actually hoping that you could babysit. Like two nights in a row? I will make it worth your while. Very interesting puzzle. The baby's mother's blood is helping her, but Taub's isn't. That means there isn't just a simple deficiency that's causing the baby's symptoms. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 7, Episode 5, Unplanned Parenthood. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos, and this will be Episode 137. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. I have been in labor for over a dozen hours, Justine. I have to yell. Are you getting it? Good. Good. Kind of, well, not the actual vagina. Get the NICU team in here. Baby's hypoxic. You need to back up. Turn that off. Short on medical history. She's only eight hours old. My nanny called. Her daughter has a dance recital tonight. She can't work late. Be at my place at seven. What if her lung problems are not coming from her lungs? Fix the liver. She'll have enough breath to keep the entire ward up all night. Last week, I should not have gone over your head. I allowed Chase to hire a new team member. I've been interviewing people all week. Have it narrowed down to two candidates. I'm thirsty. Juice! No, go back to bed. I said bed. Is she bleeding? She's oozing from her IV site. That's definitely not an abscess. It looks like dilated bile ducts. I just hired Dr. Christina Frazier. You're fired. You had the misfortune to be the lesson that Foreman is learning. Taub. It's your turn to find a young doctor. Dilated bile ducts could be congenital. So open her up. You told me you gave them your credit card. Cuddy will be back in an hour and ten minutes. I'll be back in an hour and five. You're not gonna leave. You can't. Fine. I'll stay if you stay. Ow! How many coins did you eat? That total of popcorn and coins in the mouth scene could not be more relatable. I bought my wife a trip to go have a childless weekend in Nice with her friends while I looked after my 18 month old alone and my little human's favorite activity was removing every item in a drawer that she could possibly find. It was to the point where when I wanted to cook, I would reload all the drawers to keep her occupied for the next 15 minutes while the rice was boiling. But there's a human even smaller than mine at risk here and her lungs are failing. She was born with respiratory difficulties as a blue baby, has bleeding, but her heart was working well, and now we know that the ducts in the liver are larger than expected. House wanted to look at the liver because he thought if the liver was failing, that would reduce a protein called albumin in the blood. This protein is like a water magnet holding it in the bloodstream. That force is called oncotic pressure. So if albumin levels drop, then you get the fluid leaking into the lungs potentially because of this. That would be fairly obvious though on imaging. But why would these bile ducts be big with nothing blocking them? The team is worried about something called Caroli disease, which is caused by a malformation in the womb. But we know the title here is Unplanned Parenthood. So maybe they weren't able to screen too early. The baby is of Caucasian origin, so it wouldn't be unheard of for them to have something called cystic fibrosis. Well, what is that? It's a recessive mutation of the CFTR gene that helps transport water into the mucus that we secrete. If someone inherits a faulty gene from just one parent, then happy days, no issue, the other gene kicks in and they're normal. Inherit two faulty genes though, and the channel is absent, leading to thick mucus secretions that are tough to clear. They can also cause dilated ducts and breathing difficulties. It would be fairly easy to miss on screening tests as well, unless they did something more invasive like taking fluid from around the fetus, but that carries risks. It could potentially be an inflammatory condition as well, but so soon, like primary biliary cholangitis, could potentially do it, but I mean, usually that presents way later in life. I like cystic fibrosis as a first diagnostic guess. The first thing could be a sweat test, then to send genetics to the lab for confirmation. First though, she needs to survive, this risky operation. DP's down at 50 systolic, you've got to stop the cannulation. I haven't started yet. DP is still dropping, we got to pull out, we're done. Whatever this is, it's got to be affecting our heart. It could be a vascular malformation in the liver causing both problems. What if we start the baby on steroids and anti-angiogenesis agent and dopamine? She opened up a Chinese food bag to eat money. What an idiot. There's a dime missing. Could have shortchanged you. She swallowed a dime, she poops it out, she'll be fine. Unless it gets stuck in her intestine and causes a blockage, which could kill her. Rachel needs to be monitored for 24 hours to see that the dime passes. How about I stay the night? You can really thank me. 
She's pinker. That's very good. Oh, my first time. The Grogan baby's better. You're telling me there's an opening in House's department? Is everything okay? Yeah. House, we treated for a vascular malformation, and she got better. Call me when she crashes again. House would rather live a life of stinky secrecy than admit his crimes and settle his fears with a simple x-ray. We don't like x-raying kids, but in a situation like this, when we're not so sure of the location of a potentially deadly item, then it could be valuable. I say that, but the likelihood if she did swallow it, though, would be that it came out with no issues. It's just that there are a few narrow points in the bowel that it could potentially get stuck, like at the end of the stomach, called the pyloric sphincter, or the transition from the small to large intestine called the ileocecal valve. In all fairness though, none of these are more dangerous than it getting stuck in the throat, which thankfully hasn't happened here, but is possible in the real world. House definitely has a lump stuck in his throat though with his lack of transparency here, but while he's off swimming in the mud, his team actually made the patient better. How? Well, they thought an abnormal blood vessel growing in her little liver was causing all of this and trying to close it with steroids, dopamine, and anti-blood vessel growth meds could do the trick. What could have happened is that rather than closing the vessel, they ended up treating another condition with those meds of which steroids could be the most likely to have worked. To be fair, cystic fibrosis wouldn't have been treated at all here, but primary biliary cirrhosis could have been. I would definitely want to do some blood tests for the antibody that plays a part in it called anti-mitochondrial antibody. A bit too early here to use my second diagnostic guess. I'll wait until the coin is at least below the stomach for that. Um, you're different with her. I can't help thinking, where was this mom when I was growing up? Mom, something's wrong. Oh, nurse, she's bleeding again. When Rachel wakes up, she's gonna tell Cuddy everything. Look at that. Look at that. We need an x-ray to be sure. Steroids can treat idiopathic hepatic fibrosis. Not the multiple dilated ducts. That is a dime. It's right in the middle of the colon. Hook the mom up to the baby. Direct blood transfusion. She's pink and healthy again. A blood transfusion isn't a cure. We can discuss the differential for magic blood. The baby has a simple deficiency. Hook the baby up to someone else's blood and see if she gets better. Two-year-old swallowed a coin 20 hours ago. Well, I'd go in with a scope and get it. I think we can say this isn't working. This means there's an infection. A radiation dosimeter badge turned positive. I was actually hoping that you could babysit. Like two nights in a row? I will make it worth your while. Very interesting puzzle. The baby's mother's blood is helping her, but Taub's isn't. That means there isn't just a simple deficiency that's causing the baby's symptoms. There's something special about the mother's blood that's keeping the baby stable. Taub's has infection, but I don't buy that because a newborn probably will be having breast milk or colostrum, which is packed full of the same antibodies that would be in the mother's blood. So having the infusion wouldn't have changed that unless she isn't breastfeeding. Feeding. That would be unusual, but since the baby was ill, that could have interfered with the process, although pumping would definitely be preferred here. Infection just doesn't make sense though. The baby was born blue. It's not like they were born, then were absolutely fine for a few days, and then started spiking fevers. Also, what are the baby's blood showing? Assuming it could be infection though, and cause the bleeding mycoplasmin pneumonia, is a good bet as it would cause an infection in the lungs that would be hard to detect and can lead to something called cold occlutening disease, which could in theory affect the blood and the clotting factors. That could have also caused a temporary improvement with the steroids as the inflammation went down, but then made things worse as suppressing the immune system causes the infection to spread. Such an interesting episode. All right, I'm going for mycoplasma neonatal infection as my second diagnostic guess. Even though the time scales wouldn't fit, the symptoms still do. Let's hope House's secret coin scope removal fits in this second night of babysitting, he's won himself with a false radiation leak. Otherwise, there won't be much fitting done for him for some time. It's a melanoma. Were you saying I gave my baby cancer? I found a mole under the nail on her left index finger. The biopsy revealed it's melanoma. How many people with a late stage melanoma are as healthy as she is? So what's mom's immune system really shooting at? Start with autoimmune, go test your blood. You were a great mom. You are a great mom. Operation Valkyrie is now in effect. 
old cell lung cancer. She has two cancers? Actually, the lung cancer is basically treating the skin cancer. Not once we cut out the tumor, your body will stop making the antibodies that are keeping your baby healthy. I want to wait. I want what's best for my daughter. I'm your daughter, too. I'm not going to let you martyr yourself for a two-day-old infant just because you feel guilty because you weren't around for me. Every time that new girl with a blue streak in her hair answers the phone, they screw up. There was no extra time. Mom, we need help in here. Somebody help us! Massive pulmonary embolism. She died in seconds. I'd like to formally offer you the job. You chose to act like a paranoid, scared little kid. Goodbye, Dr. Tom. I'll make sure you never forget her and what she did for you. She was just trying to be the best mom in the world. How did you eat a dime? House. <laughs> I was not expecting that ending. The way she said house, I cannot believe. <laughs> that tickled me. What's less funny, of course, is a cancer within a cancer that spread to a fetus then killed a mother through a massive pulmonary embolism who could have been saved but didn't because she wanted to hold on longer to use her blood to treat her fetus's melanoma that she gave her. Wow. That was a mouthful. Of course, most of that is medical fiction. Small cell lung cancers do not kill melanomas, and it would, in fact, not be the most desirable of treatments. Although around one in 500,000 mothers pregnant with cancer will give it to their fetuses, most commonly with lymphoma and melanoma. So neutralizing accuracy points there on the pro and con side, eight out of 10 entertainment, 8 out of 10 diagnosis, 6.8 out of 10 accuracy. This episode makes way more sense when you watch the previous one where a woman's past leaves something to be desired here.